Hello everybody, welcome to the scientific method of paper writing. Well, writing a paper can be an ominous undertaking. The first and most important parts of a paper are the content, the information you're actually providing your reader, and the organization, the way in which you logically lay out this information. While these elements are separate, they continually feed off of and form one another. Having good organization helps your content become easily understandable and may even help you go into more detail. Having well thought out detailed content will lend itself to proper organization. For this reason, there are several different ways to go about brainstorming, researching, and organizing the content of your paper. You will sometimes need to revise your organization to match your content or revise your content to match your organization. This can be overwhelming without a well thought out process. Once you are comfortable writing, you may not need to think about a step-by-step -step process for formulating ideas. Until then, let's start with a formulaic way to begin thinking about a paper. So formulaic, in fact, that we're going to draw upon science principles to make us better writers. You should probably remember learning the scientific method. Here is a shortened version of it. First, make an observation. Form a hypothesis. Next is form a hypothesis or guess about your observation. Then experiment. And finally, accept or reject your hypothesis. If your experiments disprove your hypothesis, you reject it and form a new one, then continue on with the process. The same goes for writing, but we're going to change the terms a bit. First, instead of an observation, we're going to analyze our prompt or topic and text. Next, you're going to form a thesis, form a preliminary thesis for your paper based on what you know already. Instead of experimenting, you're going to read or research. Whether you're researching independently or you're given a source, such as an article, you must explore your sources and see if you have enough support to back up your thesis. Then, accept or reject your thesis. If you have enough support, use this thesis and move on. If not, form a new thesis. So we'll break each step down a little further. First is analyzing your prompt or topic and your text. For broad topics and independent research, there is somewhat of an extra step. For now, we're going to work with a paper in which you're given a prompt and a text, like the Shakespeare one we're about to write and the texting and driving one you already finished. For these, you're going to analyze um, your prompt and text and make sure you have a basic understanding of the text. So we're going to use our texting and driving prompt as an example. So here it is. What is the best way to prevent teens from texting and driving? Write an essay in which you argue your best idea to prevent this from occurring. Use information from the following text to support your answer. So notice that this prompt is not asking you to argue whether texting and driving is bad or good. It's asking you what is the best way to prevent it. So in the next step, forming your thesis, keep this in mind to be sure your thesis actually addresses the question being asked. So again, on to the next step, which is forming your thesis. Some of you may be asking, why would you create a thesis so early? Forming a thesis at this stage will help you analyze the text for exactly what you need. So how do you form a thesis? Well, not all theses, theses, thesi, whatever, will look exactly alike, and more advanced writers can play around with format, but here is an easy way for you to start. You first are going to, going to begin with your topic, um, and then um, you will include a verb which is going to talk about specifically what you're going to be saying about your topic. And then three main ideas, the three ideas that will form the body of your essay. So to use this prompt as an example, our topic would be texting and driving. And our verb could be, can be prevented. And the three main ideas I'm going to use, uh, by increasing and enforcing laws, spreading awareness, and creating technology. So one helpful hint for style, be sure to use parallelism in your thesis. So that means you should use the same grammatical structure for each main idea. Here we use verbs for the first part of each main idea, specifically uh, present participles, all with ing endings, and the second part's a noun in all three cases. That just makes it sound a whole lot better. Next you want to write your thesis on your outline. Here's an example outline. So put it there just to help you keep organized. 
Now, once you have that, you go on to the next step, which is experiment or read and research. So, you have to read and research to make sure you have enough textual support for each of your main ideas. So, read through whatever material you have to find that out. So, how do you know if you do have enough support for your main ideas? Your outline, once again, can come in handy for this. So, first, go back to your outline and put each of your main ideas in the topics for each of your body paragraphs. So we have increasing and enforcing laws, spreading awareness, and creating technology. Um, after that, go and find support for each one. Oops. So go and find support for each one. So for instance, for increasing and enforcing laws, I found this quote, like 10 to 40 percent decrease in certain accidents when you have that graduated standard. So this is talking about um, laws that um, are heavier when you're younger and lighten up as you get older and it shows that that works. So there would be some support for that first idea. Now you do need to know that you can find more than one piece of support for each main idea. Um, this support and explanation piece can be repeated. We can be repeated more than once. You definitely can repeat this and actually the more support you give the better. But for now, this is a small prompt and we're just going to find one piece of evidence for each one since this was a timed writing. So, going on, here's another piece of support. Now we get to creating technology. Now the problem is, we don't have any support for that. If you remember the text we read, there was nothing in there about um, creating technology to solve this problem. So if you don't have, if one of your ideas does not have support, um, that is where the next step comes in. The next step, accepting or rejecting your thesis. So because one of our points in our thesis did not have support, we have to reject it. Even though preventing texting while driving with technology is a good idea, it does not have support, so we really can't talk about it in our text. So we reject our thesis and have to go back to form a new thesis. So in this case, we can keep everything the same except we're going to take away creating technology and let's change it to changing the culture. Notice I still kept it parallel with our present participle and our verb. So next step, make sure we have support. So let's go to our outline and see. So take away creating technology, put in changing the culture, and then here's some support talking about cultural change that I found in the essay. So now we have enough support and we can accept our thesis, which means we now have an outline that reflects the major content and organization of our paper. So you may be wondering, can you just read the text first and choose ideas that you know are supported by the text? Yes, absolutely you can. But if you have trouble finding good information in a text, it may help you to use this method, picking out your thesis first, to find exactly what you're looking for in the text while you're trying to read it. The main idea here is that you must have support from the text for each main idea. You may also be wondering, uh, what about this explanation and conclusion part here? Well, put a pin in that idea. We'll be talking about that next time when we talk about body paragraphs and incorporating textual support. All right, now you should be ready to make your outline with great organization and content for your paper.